Hello everyone, we are live. It is time for a pretty important Q&A. I think it's been a long time coming since we've done kind of a general Q&A as such. So um, we thought, well, you know, this is the time to do it. We've got quite a lot to talk about. So without further ado, uh, we're going to introduce everyone and talk about what they do and, you know, uh, in regards to the RuneScape is a game, so, so you're familiar with them. Because two people you might not have seen on the stream for a very long time, and they're back on the stream as well, so we'll get to them in just a moment. Jack, start with you. Uh, I'm Mod Jack, I'm a designer. Currently I'm working on mining and smithing. And uh, obviously I'm going to use this as a chance to say, obviously with the mining and smithing bit, obviously ongoing right now. Yes. You guys have okay. uh, been releasing updates, and today was a pretty big yeah, update we put, as well. Yeah, we, put, we did some hot fixing last week to fix um, small issues, including that mining XP was ridiculously high. <laughs> Um, we've done a, a cold fix today, so the server's restarted, um, and uh, that's fixed loads of bugs. We've also put in some vendors that you can claim materials and buff items from, so it's much easier to test what buffs are going to do and that sort of thing. So, um, for obviously the duration of the stream, mostly related to mining and smithing questions, of course, we'll be coming to you for that one. To my left, Mod Pi. It has been uh, a very long time. Hello, sir. Just a little while. Uh, so, for anyone who might be new to the stream, a bit of a reminder. What do you do here at uh, Jagex? Um, I am a senior, what's new since, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> gameplay programmer. Um, and I'm currently working on mobile, mm -hmm. but I also have quite a heavy hand with combat. I think that's, that's a terrible way to put it. I'm getting quiet for that. Um, <laughs> but I have a quite heavy a, hand, of a heavy hand in combat, yeah. Um, <laughs> what I mean is, like, I, I get involved in combat a lot. No, that's fair. Um, and obviously, uh, we have combat questions that you guys have asked us on Reddit, Twitter, so on and so forth that we're going to pick up. Obviously, as well, we are taking questions through the chat. So, midway through the stream, uh, we'll probably answer a couple of these questions on the chat. But of course, if these guys want to jump in at any time, if they see anything, they can do that. <laughs> to my right, Michael. Oh, nice. Hi. Uh, Michael, it's been a while, Michael. Oh, yes. Uh, I so... don't think I've been on since uh, the last Christmas stream. That's correct. Where we all cheated heavily on pin the <laughs> tail on the donkey or whatever version we had. Um, yes, I'm a senior producer on RuneScape and uh, it's kind of like my responsibility is to manage the kind of roadmaps for both the development and the release roadmaps. So what the teams are working on and when the stuff they're working on gets released into the game. Yeah, I'm um, oh, sorry. And yeah, and, uh, my kind of focus at the moment is kind of 2019 and beyond, um, kind of having, making sure we've kind of have this kind of uh, plan, the kind of uh, that you were uh, fluff my lines. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm a bit rusty. It's been a while. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Um, yeah, that we we have something where we have we're not just kind of this year. We've kind of like uh, updated something here, updated something there, sort of thing. Uh, we're putting together a kind of larger plan with a overarching kind of narrative and stuff that. We, uh, everything kind of makes sense and uh, we're kind of moving the game in a certain direction sort of thing. Yeah, so obviously we have you on stream to answer like those kind of big top level questions as well because yes. obviously it helps to have something Yeah, I like... can uh, answer more strategic type yes. questions, I guess, um, but not so much of the nitty gritty ninja fixy <laughs> oh, the good old days, huh? Um, and then uh, to Kelpie's right, we have Maud Raven, of Hello. course. Uh, Raven, what do, you, what do you do for Jagex? Uh, I'm lead content developer. Um, uh, most recently, I was involved with Needle Skips, and currently I'm working on Elite Dungeons 3 Shadow Reef. Ooh. <laughs> one of a kind. Your job for is to sure. do that. That's uh, pretty much it. That's, so that I mean, that's that's that fair. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, that's good. Hey. Right back on the stream with a ban, indeed. Um, so we kind of have you on, obviously, for questing and lore stuff as well. So mm -hmm. obviously we have those kind of questions. So it's great to have you on the stream to kind of answer them as well. Um, let's talk about the skips really quickly. Um, I think it's safe to say it's gone down incredibly well. Um, yes. Are you happy uh, in regards to the content? Obviously, I think you have a couple of shouts to do as well. In uh, to oh, yes. I mean, uh, I... Mod Helen deserves a, a big shout out because she did some uh, vital work on it, on tweaking and improving the interface so that we could uh, get it all up and running nice and smoothly, and also to allow us to use the needle in future. Um, but uh, Mod Krista laid all the groundwork, got all the prototype of stuff working, um, built a lot of what uh, we see, and of course Mod Osborne wrote it, so he deserves all the credit for the lovely writing. 
Yeah, so um, I think in essence, I, um, now before we jump into it, we kind of just summarize the stream. So uh, as I mentioned at the start of the stream, it's kind of a general Q&A, but we're using this as an opportunity to kind of answer these questions you guys have wanted answers for a long time, because in the past, our streaming schedules have been kind of related to the content coming up, content showcases and so on. This is a general one. We're covering sections from the upcoming mind and smithing, law, we have more of the top level stuff, and combat. So we have a nice rounded uh, approach here for them. So. Uh, just, Let's, uh, oh yeah, go ahead. When the uh, stream started, I didn't realize how kind of like rural, very darkly dressed, and you're the, <laughs> the golden boy in the middle there. I mean, here's, here's our shining light. He's also the only clean shaven one as well, so the rest yeah. of us are beardy weirdies. Beardy weirdies! <laughs> I think Weird. that sums us Weird up fairly well, to be fair. <laughs> oh, man. You're always uh, with the Eminem references all the time. Huh? And you don't even realise it. <laughs> Was that an Eminem reference? Yeah. Uh, okay, we're apparently a type of coated peanut. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's get. have to be. It's <laughs> <laughs> my favourite. <laughs> so uh, let's kick us off. A um, couple of questions coming in. Uh, some of these are from Reddit, so we'll just rattle them off. So, what is the likelihood of updating trees and ground textures to be consistent with the Needle Skips quest? Brackets looks so beautiful, by the way. Because um, playing through the Needle Skips quest made the player feel like this is, should be what RuneScape should be like across the entire game graphically. So what's uh, the yeah, it's that? definitely. Uh, definitely a desire of ours is to kind of graphically update like the whole surface world. We haven't really done the best job in the past of um, setting ourselves up for success in terms of uh, being able to graphically update the whole area. Um, we've kind of like taken one area and we've focused on it and then we've gone to another area and we've com created completely different as new assets and such. And what we're doing, trying to do a lot more of, is creating assets that we can reuse a lot, which then allows us to go around and graphically update the whole area um, a lot better. Um, we've also uh, kind of like, over the years, it's always been the case that when you've created a new asset, you've uh, you well, come to create a new area, they've gone, right, we need a barrel and someone creates a brand new barrel specifically for that area. And as a result, we have this database of like millions of different <laughs> barrels and crates and such. And we want to get to the point where actually we're making fewer of those and then you can more easily use those. Um, if you graphically update one, you graphically update them all at the same time sort of thing. Um, so yes, we're trying to, to be a, uh, smarter with how we do things. Um, we do have desires to um, graphically update kind of the the surface world and stuff awesome. it's not a it's not a quick thing no. um, but we are kind of putting plans in place and so we are hoping to um do a bit of that over time sort of thing i think we're getting uh, it but a bit a lot more rapidly than we have been in the past yes. sort of thing because we did do we did do like a few uh you did have like in the uh, like a couple of years ago now but you had like falador and then we did Caffaby. white wolf mountain the white wolf mountain yeah, yeah and there was was desire to kind of push further out from that, but um, it kind of um, stalled, and uh, we needed a better strategy for that stuff. And I think it's kind of coming to play that we're, we're getting there again, sort of thing. Like with the Halloween event, as an example, like even though the Halloween was based on Drano, I noticed obviously the area around there, Lumbridge and so on, has actually had their ground textures updated. So there yeah. is an opportunity, obviously, to do that. Yeah, so. when we when we do create some content um, for an area, we do try to rework it um, as much as possible. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but it, some of the times that, that is, you know, dependent on the time you have available or the, the resources we have available. Um, uh, but yeah, we, we try when we can, sort of thing. Awesome. Um, okay, uh, can we get a clear answer in regards to the Premier Artifact? It is meant to be used only by itself, or is the current situation where you can't use an aura of it a bug? Um, so I, I guess I can take this one because I'm asked around to try and get an answer. So I got the response which was, uh, it's only supposed to be used by itself as it's too powerful to be used in conjunction with, conjunction with other auras and is an answer on the FAQ about why it isn't an aura anymore. The example I was given was the Pantheon aura in 2016, you were not able to use the 10% XP boost and an aura at the same time, it forced itself into the aura slot. So just thought I'd clear that one up. Raven, I think we're coming to you for this one. Can you tell us more about the 2019 direction for the story and the initiatives you'll be taking to make questing great again? Uh, well, this is something both uh, Mod Jack and myself have been working on. Um, uh, I don't think we're going to say too much at this stage. We're definitely looking at the story. We're trying to bring story as a core focus for the game. And so everything kind of ties into the world story. We want to give a sense of that the story of the world is progressing and moving. Um, we're also looking at 
how like requisites work, so things like quest requisites, that kind of thing, um, because whilst they're certainly an old uh, facet of how RuneScape works, they're not at normally they're not always terribly useful, like locking something really cool and new behind, uh, you know, 15 years of very old um, quests, some of which haven't dated terribly well, isn't always <laughs> brilliant, and you don't actually need to, so we're looking at ways to make that work organically and not be jarring um, if we do that, uh, but we are looking into all that at the moment. Make sense? Yeah. Um, awesome. A question, and anyone can take this one, or you can all get involved. Uh, how would you recommend new players go about questing without spoiling storylines of quests they have yet to start? I think just just Stuart's covering the world. At, <laughs> Stuart's been looking at putting them in a in a, in a specific yeah. order, hasn't yeah. he? I think that's 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 not out yet. I don't think, but no, he's been no. he's been looking at ordering the quests. So essentially, if you if you absolutely don't want to ever play anything out of order, then then you can follow a strict prerequisite model. Um, it's fair. That means you have to play a lot of really old quests before you can play some new quests. Um, in practice, we don't find new players really have this issue. It's more a thing that existing players worry that new players will have a problem yes. with. Yes. I just say the fact I've asked four questions and we've had four different people answer already is great because we're about to have high answer this one. Hey. Uh, will you ever release new bosses and so on for lower level players or do you ever in only intend to increase the difficulty of the bosses? Um, I find that we tend to go in a bit of a cycle um, where we focus on like the proper end game for a little bit and then we go oh not many people engage with that so um, we're going to release a more accessible one um, and that's where we're heading into now especially with the direction that we want to go with combat we're going to have a heavy accessibility focus that's not to say that we're not going to do end game bosses it's just rather than catering to the top two percent we'd yeah. rather cater to the top like 35 50 percent um so I don't think we'll release like a proper low level in, in like low low level boss, um, but we definitely want a lot more people engaged when we release a boss. So like kind of mid to high level, I think is where we're at. think think like a God Wars level sort of thing, so God, where a lot yeah. more people can okay. get involved. Um, and obviously, looking at from a free to play perspective, obviously back in twenty sixteen we released Jaimol and KBD to free to play players as well. So. I mean, as an example of obviously allowing lower level players who might not even be yeah. members to try that as well. So, okay, awesome. Uh, Kelpie, coming to you, I think, for this one. Uh, will we ever see a rework slash additional content of construction? Um, I think, uh, whilst there's no nothing particularly planned now, I think if we were to do anything, uh, we would introduce new construction methods before we'd maybe look at reworking player own house. Um, I don't think we would work rework POH first and then mm -hmm. and just do that. I think we would look at more maybe bringing construction more to the surface world or other forms of construction into the game and then maybe go back and look at POH. But um, right now it is um, we haven't prioritised it. Um, that doesn't mean that it can't be something um, that we could look at um, in the near future but um, right now it's not something we're working on. Awesome. Uh, I think Pi, this will be your one. Uh, are you considering different UI for desktop and mobile? I get that some interfaces are hard for mobile, but mobile interfaces can sometimes be a hassle on desktop. Um, <clears throat> in truth, it's, it's going to be a balance. So if you completely separate everything, then whenever we create a piece of content, we need to create it twice, mm. which isn't great. You, you create the mobile version, you create the desktop version. Yeah, see, and Legacy is an example, I guess, right? Is that like kind of kind two of, of the they, same? They, they kind of work okay. together, but also kind of don't. Yeah. Um, but basically, we don't want to create ourselves into an area of technical debt, so we'd rather do things together. Yeah. There some, we do have quite a lot of tools. A lot of the time that we spent on mobile has been creating tools for developers when they go forwards. So we released an update recently for the, you know, the little buttons at the bottom of the backpack, for instance. Yep. That's all the same code. They just render differently on mobile, so it kind of, you kind of work together, and that's what, more where we're heading. So I, I totally get it. You don't want big, clunky buttons. Like We all hated Windows, what is it, Windows 8? Um, <laughs> when they were like, I'm on a PC, why does it look like a tablet? So we're not, we're not going to be heading Heading that way, like we share your frustrations, but we do need to think about the, how to bring everything together. The, the new interfaces in mining and smithing, the spring cleaner interface and the um, smelting and smithing interfaces are designed to work on mobile and desktop. And I don't think you can tell that interacting with them. Like, no, no. They don't you, feel you, like, oh, this is a mobile interface. The, like the Make X, the <coughs> special Make X window for it looks amazing for Mind Smith and Baby. You wouldn't think there's mobile. Yeah, but that's, that was designed with well. mobile in mind. That's though. awesome. Awesome. All right. Um, bit of a, question, a general question. Anyone can take this, or you can all take it. Um, if you could bring 
any piece of content from old school into RuneScape, which would it be? Any piece of content from old school? Yes. Old school. Yes. <laughs> I think now. <laughs> Do you know, I mean, we can answer others while you guys. I are mean, can we that. steal some of the things that works in old school but not in RSD? Like, I'd like to. I know this is weird coming for me, given that I don't do any of it, but I'd like to bring some of the PvP kind of stuff back in, because it's very strong in old school, but not mm. so strong in RS3. And I'd like to, it'd be nice if we could steal that success, make going into the world steal that success. again. Steal, I think, <laughs> we'll just, I think we'll just, if we could yeah. copy that success. <laughs> yeah. Not necessarily steal it from, but if we could have, like, if the wilderness could have that kind of PvP murder state to it, it'd be really nice when we put content back into the wilderness and players go, why? And they've got a reason to complain now, which is nice. <laughs> I mean, I'd love the PRH room update to, um, oh. for us. That would be awesome. Um, I think that would be really cool. Um, but uh, yeah, but, uh, okay. Uh, yeah, there'd be plenty of stuff if, like, technically it was as easy to implement it as it was, right? Um, unfortunately, <laughs> it is. Um, uh, Jack, coming to you for this one. Uh, when the minus Smith and Rework goes live, can those who went into the beta be rewarded with the chick axe? Uh, I checked this, and we can't reward beta players specifically, there is some discussion of what we might do with the chick axe. Really? It's very much Deg's baby, but yes. I d not promised at all. Might not happen, might happen. If it does happen, it might be weird. <laughs> it, it would, yeah, it wouldn't, it, it's not a might, it would be weird. I always thought it was just a my, joke. My main problem with it is we can't, we can't, oh, we, we don't have a good system at the moment for overriding your um, pickaxe being wielded. Uh, oh, we might be able to hack it in using the MTX skilling override system. But we don't we don't have a good way of making it a cosmetic only pickaxe, yeah. so it would have to have stats. So if it's I can't believe you guys useful. are actually considering. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. Okay. Um, Not necessarily. Won't necessarily happen. Yeah, that's fair. Um, come to you for this one, Pi. Can we please have barrages give adrenaline on single targets when using it? Uh, yeah, <clears throat> this has been a job in the combat backlog for longer than I can remember. Um, so I had a look at it today, and it's actually a very easy fix. So boom, I'll. Uh, this is why these streams help. Yeah, <laughs> boom. I'll, I'll I'll bump that up the combat, um, the, the the combat backlog, and probably fix it myself when I get back to my desk to make sure that it happens. Um, there you go. Yeah, it's also bundled up with um, another inconsistency with magic, whereby dual wield and two H give two percent adrenaline. Yeah. Whereas all of the other styles give three percent adrenaline for. 2H because it gives 50 like the offhand does stuff, so yeah, I might I might do that fix at the same time. It's fair. Um, this might be a question between you and Pyjack. Um, as of the time of the stream, is there any new slash discussed ideas to share about the set effect of trimmed masterwork? This is the um, tier 92 in essence. Yeah, so 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 with the money smithing work, you can make tier 92 melee armor. Um, yep. It's very expensive to make. We're probably going to reduce the cost, but it will still be very, very expensive to make. More, more than 100 million, even long term. Um, and, and tier 92 basic melee armor just isn't good enough to justify that price tag at the moment. So we do want to give it a benefit, but it's a tricky problem as to what that benefit should be. Because if we just slapped 50% extra damage on it, right, then it would be must have armor because it would be amazing. But it would also trivialize most of the content that's currently in the game. And then when we release the next boss, that boss would have to be balanced on the assumption that you have this armor and also we've just crashed the prices of everything in the game so it's not actually easy we can't just add a flat damage bonus the way the combat is currently balanced we can't just make it much better so we're trying to find a way to justify the price tag with a useful effect that doesn't just radically increase your kill times so we're, cool. we're experimenting with that this week yeah um, we've got some prototypes yeah so we're going we're to try and get it prototyped um, um, so we can do some play tests make it feel yeah. good nice um Okay, 2018 Premier Membership was somewhat a success. The four exclusive bonuses um, were, have been a bit of a flop and were clearly rushed. Why is 2019 Premier more expensive with less, than, excuse me, with less to offer than 2018? Is this due to membership going to $11? Uh, yeah. Just so in line yeah, with... Yeah, I mean, like we're, we're focusing more on actually what the, the package is in terms of like the value for money. All the kind of extras we've kind of done in the past are, well, you, you see how the, the chess goes sort of thing. We say, we've said one thing and then we, when we plan to try and do stuff over a year, it never kind of works too well, to be honest. I mean, like we need to hold our hands up there. Um, we say, hey, we'll do this thing. And we start doing something in, ten, in what we thought 
like in the way we intended it and then people kind of feel like oh that's not what I expected and then we might try and like rush to come up with some other way to kind of appease people because we've not met their expectations and it's like let's not promise something which yeah. at the end of the day is not going to meet anyone's Mobile's a good example of that, so. like <clears throat> being Premier you get into all beaters, right? However, quite an important part of our selection pro process for being in the mobile beta is what device you have because we need to we need to drill down very specifically onto what devices we're testing on. So, um, but the trouble is, like an awful lot of people <coughs> in Prem Club don't have those devices, yeah. or they've got a very outdated device, you know, or they're on iOS, and it's like it's things. These things just don't align the way we want them to, and then we end up giving false promises, and that's just bad. It's fair. Um, if a clan owner steps down, which deputy owner receives ownership of the clan? This has never had an official answer to it. Um, okay. Yeah, clan boy. Uh, clan boy. <laughs> clan boy. Uh, clan boy. Uh, so TLDR, make this very quick. Um, when you go into your clan settings, there's a drop down which will let you to assign it by rank. Choose deputy owner. Mouse over the names. You see their join dates. Whichever is the oldest deputy owner will be the replacement owner. Simple as that, really. Um, so that's that. Okay, this should be a, uh, uh, this should be a good question. Any plans for additional bank space, bank presets, and more action bars? Just some quality of life bins. Um, action bars and bank presets. Uh, I've not had a conversation about those in quite a while, so um, I won't say anything there. Mm -hmm. Bank space is kind of one of those subjects that just constantly is always brought up and we're constantly looking into. I think people are well aware that um, technically we're kind of at our limits at what we can give people um, and therefore we need to do kind of further work um, to do that. Um, but it is something we, yeah, we do want to look into and, and try and make available if possible. So it's kind of a, so when we give people bank space, that's like an expense on the server and so on and so forth, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. I so mean, that's clear that. Pi will be able to explain more technically than I can. By all means, if, if, you, if be, you want, but I, I can. So I think we probably do it a lot. the best way to extrapolate is to think about this, right? Think about the most expensive slot value, right? So you've got an object with all of the object variables set in it. So like an, an an item with a gizmo with everything leveled up to max, you know, yep. most amount of information you can store on that. Then multiply that up by the number of bank spaces that you've got available, and then you add a bit more, and you're adding more than just that little bit of chunk. Then multiply that up by the maximum amount of players that you need, and then that's the amount of storage space that we need to make sure we always have allocated at all times to make sure we can always save your player's state. So adding a little... Adding, it might sound trivial to just add a bit of bank space, but when you actually multiply it up by how much one slot costs to save and then multiply it by all of our players, all of a sudden it's like, boom. Um, so that's why it takes a little while. Well, we are very aware of the problem and we know yeah, that. Yeah, we're not, we're we're not we're unsympathetic. Every update that adds a bunch of new of items into the game, like the, the problem just gets worse and worse. Mm -hmm. um, we did, do, we did l do some study into kind of like how many people it affects. And it you know, affects a decent people, but probably not as much as you might expect um but yeah i am enjoying the content that's kind of working with that so for example these dungeons have their own chests which kind of pull away from the bank area uh, bank spaces as it were obviously you know player on farm raven you guys have been doing work uh, did work in regards to that update to try and ease up on the bank space wherever possible but obviously due to the classic yeah. breeding as such yeah Players are not meant to be storing them in the bank. If you're storing them in your bank, please stop storing them in your bank. <laughs> Just kill them. I mean, uh, sell them. <laughs> <laughs> or release them back in the wild. Oh, you wish you could have given that option. Yeah, there you go. Um, Will we ever see a return to more new items having the option to drop them rather than just putting the destroy option on everything? As an example, Spirit Gems. Uh, I mean, it's not any design decision I'm aware of. I don't know. I think it's just something that's organically happened. It's yeah. it's normally to do when whether or not the item is tradable. Yes. Yeah. If it's not tradable, we make it destroy because we want to make sure it doesn't accidentally Until somehow, somehow get an untradable do something item. weird. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's better to make it destroy. Also, if it has a particularly high value or is useful in 
you know, piece of content will make it destroy so that players don't accidentally drop player it. Player on fan mush, as an example. Like, if you could somehow drop mush to other players, then obviously you're giving them free food to feed their animals. Like, well, I mean, you could theoretically just yeah, give them sweet corn, but... Uh, I mean, you didn't have to go against them, the example I gave. I mean, I, I kind of did, but... Uh, <laughs> no, no, you didn't! Because <laughs> there was a chance to disagree, so I took it. Um, <laughs> yeah, with, with... I mean, mush is a weird case, because mush is... A kind of an, a, a way to get around a limitation with how we built the code. Uh, the reason mush exists is because we originally didn't let you take food out of the troughs. Once you put it in, it was gone. But then we realized, of course, people wanted to swap based on the animals. We'd already made the troughs and all the code the way the troughs work, and making it bespoke for every single item was just ridiculous. Mm. Um, so we uh, we created mush as our solution, but we wanted it to be untradeable so that people would partially so they would do their own farming runs i realize i'm caught on a complete tangent here and yeah, yeah. About the existence of to mush. the to the bank's base point i think it is it is something that we're all kind of intensely yeah. aware of as developers yeah, yeah. And, and and we're trying to avoid spamming you with items yeah um mining mining smithing adds adds a bank you can put your met your metal into which isn't and that'll actually save a lot of bank space when it goes live as yeah. well because obviously it's taken out items as well, which is great. Mm -hmm. So there's obviously ways uh, to help with that. Uh, Pi coming to you for this one. What are your thoughts on using a massive weapon diversity change to justify 120 combat skills or vice versa? So <clears throat> this, this question threw me a little bit because those two things yeah, are, 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 are like have nothing to do with each other. Like mm -hmm. weapon diversity, for instance, will most definitely scale from base, from level one. Like a level one dagger will have the dagger effect on it. It's there to give us breadth, um, whereas 120 upping those values would give us depth, yep. if you catch my drift. Yep. Um, also, we're only at tier 92, and we're resistant to hold, hand out tier 95 because like, NPCs are, going, are being killed so fast, aside from like Solak, etc., that like, players just don't need their extra power. So we're not even hit tier 99 yet. So asking the question, when do we go to 120? Well, we haven't reached 99 yet, so. Well, I mean, arguably we could, we could in theory, just take combat to 120 without, we wouldn't have anything to do with the gear. Yeah. We could we have could combat do, stats um, to go to 120 and, and, and gear doesn't. And players doesn't. would get more power because yeah, of that. Yeah, only a little bit, a little bit more. But then there wouldn't, there's, no really, there's not really any content. Like, going, taking all combat skills to 120, presumably we'd need to add new abilities, which would be more powerful. Yeah. There's no monsters to fight with them. I mean, things do naturally scale. Like you would get more power out of it than you think, um, because they multiply up through the combat system. Yeah, yeah. Um, but <clears throat> yeah, I just don't, I don't think it's needed until we're like at tier ninety nine gear. We're going, yeah. oh come on! Um, it's it, it effectively would make the reasons for doing it are skiller reasons, not player combat reasons. You would catch my drift. Yep. Like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is combat. good. I, I, I love the back and forth of us. It's great. Um, would you consider adding rare, potentially untradeable items to high-end skilling that are needed for higher tier weapons slash armor? I guess, Jack, probably best suited to answer that one. From, sorry, what items from skilling? Yes. Um, I mean, that's essentially how the mining and smithing rework works, which is sort of a prototype. And if, 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 if that ends up working, we could look at doing that for other things because it, it, it's complicated, but it essentially requires high tier skilling items and high tier PVM items. And that's where you get the PVM I, I, I kind of like that. I kind of miss the days <coughs> when the skillers were feeding the yeah, PVMers. Because exactly right. the PVMers are going to make profit almost yeah. no matter what, right? They're, especially if they're efficient at what they're doing. Um, and can't, one of the key reasons why we're so resistant to give healing items in the game is because we kind of miss the day when people actually used a lot of yeah, food. We, like we ideally like, want that to come from skillers. Yeah, things like yeah. vamp um, and like soul split kind of diminished yeah. that effect. Yeah. Um, and, I, and like... Contrary to uh, like what people would believe, I actually like the fact that you've taken skilling items off of bosses, so the skillers <laughs> yeah. can start re-injecting them. Because yeah, so in th so in theory, we could look at doing the same thing with yeah, yeah. But it kind of, it does depend on how it goes, right? Like yeah, because we don't want to wreck the whole economy with one update. So well, yeah, you have to you have to be quite careful and, with it yeah, um, because your your investment <laughs> is more kind of time rather than the whole gambit of I could die and I'm putting these supplies in. But yeah. there's definitely a balance there, and yeah, I, I think. That was great. I was just sitting back. I was just enjoying it. <laughs> uh, honestly, I love... You just like people talking to each other. I just enjoy the, how these conversations go. I find it really fascinating. Like, I don't know. Anyway, um, <laughs> any updates on an iOS mobile beta at all? The only answer I have for you is soon, TM. Um, <laughs> we're using Android as our platform currently because 
we're doing a lot of gameplay and UI changes which aren't platform specific, right? So we can kind of drill down. It's again, again, it's about drilling down and focusing on what we actually need to work on. Um, when we come around to doing like device testing on iOS, then you'll see an iOS beta. And is, is that it's specifically because it's harder to push updates on iOS? Uh, no, we don't have a favorite. All right, okay. Um, we have to pick one. But we have to pick one. Right. Awesome, right. Um, can we have the remaining drop rates for the combat skill and pets revealed? It's been quite some time since we received the info on how the normal skill and pets drop rates work. Drop rates, no way I said that. Um, I guess Timbo that's question? A, that's a question for Cause Timbo. Because Timbo obviously yeah. is, in, okay, yeah, Timbo's uh, in charge of all that. Um, all right, some questions from the chat, we'll uh, pluck them off, because we're actually ha this is actually going really well, because there was a load of questions we wanted to get answered, then halfway we get chat questions, then we got another bit, then more questions. So, um, is it possible to get a Game Breaker title for extensive testing of the new Mining and Smith and Rework beta? Um, in theory, yes. Well, um, I answered this know. recently on Twitter. What did you say? Did you? Oh, yeah, yeah, you said. Yeah, yeah. You just have to so go crazy. Make sure the, the messaging's the, the same. Yeah, the, <laughs> that, so the Game Breaker title isn't something which has a set amount of requirements to earn. Mm. In order to get the Game Breaker title, you need to impress a JMod so much that they're just like, wow, like, almost start to make us ask the question, why the hell did this guy do this much work? Like, <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's do a little trivia. Can you remember the last time he gave one and why? Was it, was it NXT, the NXT beta? A guy played through all the quests, tested yes, yeah. and fully documented every single quest. <laughs> and like, all of you need issues. to go. You don't don't find one bug on on the mining Smith beta, or even a hundred, and assume that you're going to get game breaker. <clears throat> you need to go above and beyond. Beta is always the easiest time, I guess, because that's when the J mods are looking for like mm. particular help, I guess. But in um, general, if you're starting it's with the always the case where if, like if you're like, I want this title, how can I do the minimum possible to get the title? You're not you're not going to get the title. That's not what it's for. Yeah. It's like if you were motivated in the first place to do that much for some other reason, then if we notice and it's right, then we might give you the title. Game, Game Breaker was more of a reactive thing because when we did the combat beta originally, we saw like a small subset of players just going completely out of yeah. their way yeah. and working with us really, really closely. And we were just like, it was just yeah. like a little thank you that we could offer them. Um, obviously it's kind of grown since then, but the original reason is to just be- Recognize able... extraordinary accomplishments. Yeah, there it's you not go. a title that you can earn, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, some more questions in the chat. Raven, come to you on this one. What post quest stuff do you have planned for the needle? Um, some Yeah, stuff. I wasn't expecting, like, a uh, uh, I'm already working on stuff that maybe might have it, and it's not necessarily <laughs> where you think. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well done, you bought yourself some time. <laughs> yeah. Is there going to be a showcase for the new Christmas event coming up? Uh, I imagine so. <laughs> you guys. I mean, jo uh, I mean question for John, John? you guys. I mean, I'll check your sign-up. You'll see him, you guys decide. <laughs> <laughs> Showcase for the new Christmas event coming up as a sh on, a sh on a stream schedule. Oh, next week. Next week, yeah. Next week? Next week. Have you checked, have next you checked, looked at it? I haven't gone to the bottom yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to sell it at the end of the stream. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, on <laughs> top um, <laughs> Uh, all right, uh, we got actually quite a few minor Smith and Chair questions from the chat. So obviously, people wanting to go uh, on the beta and get involved and stuff. So we'll rattle them off really quickly. Uh, within Mining and Smith and why can't we tune Bane armor and weapons with dragon and demon heads? Because uh, it's a different tuning method. That's the tuning method that you learn on Kethsy. It's not the same method. And how will the Smith and Mining rework affect the scroll of efficiency from Dr. Uh, at the moment? It gives plus five percent XP, but I'm not very happy with that because it's only an XP benefit and not an economic benefit, which the current benefit is. So we'll probably change it to something else. Awesome. Uh, is, uh, let's go to you, Pi. Uh, one last question from the chat, and then we'll carry on. Uh, is there any plans for a third raids boss? Oh, the combat council really want to do it. Hmm. Kelpie. The combat council <laughs> really want to make more raids. In fact, uh, my answer to the old school question is I want raids. Uh, uh, I would... <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, are you saying, like, another <laughs> boss onto the existing Mazcap raid, or are you talking about new raid? <laughs> either at this point i think i think it, like we do have existing designs for the existing raids we have some bosses ready to go not ready to go they're not coded um but we have a lot of people heavily invested and when we talk about raids we are talking about mascot raids and we're not including elite dungeons in that i mean elite dungeons are dungeons not raids yeah um which have a different loadout 
I do have a, a, a another update which could be pitched as a raid, but I'm not going to talk about that. <laughs> um, however, no, like actually, if like, so, what does, a lot uh, of people do raids? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, it's yeah. I mean, I want to do it, Kelsey. <laughs> the question is, does it fit into the schedule? How does it? Yeah, fit yeah. The the, the thing is, like, a ten man boss encounter is incredibly complex. Mm. When we, um, I mean, I was part of the team back when we first started that project, doing like the Tusker stuff and then the raids as a result of thing. And the plan was like seven, yeah. and we got to two. <laughs> yeah, it's incredibly complex, <laughs> it and it, like, it kind of seven. it kind of harks back to <clears throat> what I said earlier about accessibility yeah. uh, versus like t for the end game. So if we did do a raid at the moment, we'd probably go back and try and do a whole bunch of stuff yeah. to make raids a lot more accessible. That said, they are like in the top 10 of um, our boss bosses currently in terms of engagement, so they are doing really, really well, mm -hmm. um, even even this many years after. And even with a duo reset, a uh, two-day reset as well. Yeah, well it's probably because of the well, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, you know, like, we'd probably make it, the, uh, the previous two, a lot more accessible, so. I did say we were done with Twitch questions, but I have a, a note just added to this pad, which says, good one for Raven. So, um, it says... <laughs> oh, yeah. Every time a different player completes the needle skips, is that actually just a different iteration of the time oh. loop in which the player uses a slightly different name and outfit and order of events? Spoilers. So this is this is one of those. I mean, I've been having say time sure. travel question all day. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm attempting to say sure, but it's also like kind of it's one of those questions which is you're you're trying to apply logic to what is clearly a gameplay moment in the same way that like there aren't hundreds of people. Well, you know, all. Defeating Sliske in completely different <laughs> timelines, uh, you know, they're on uh, well balanced, you know The the chef isn't getting thousands of people to make cake so we can you know Force feed them to the Duke is just going no, please no more cake it, It's a gameplay thing, but so they're not all separate incidents. It's <laughs> it's that kind of gamey wamey stuff <laughs> All right, um, I'm going to use this to go to a quick section on Game Jam projects. So obviously we had Game Jam take place very recently. Uh, Kelpie, if you don't mind me asking, uh, st status-wise on Game Jam projects, how are we looking? Status-wise, so um, we were kind of, in the past we've kind of done Game Jams. It's just been kind of being a bit open, free-for-all, what do you want to make? Hey, here's some cool stuff. Um, some stuff people um, might go a little bit silly with. <laughs> what? <laughs> Penguin musical raids or... Don't know what um, you mean, yeah. but I want to do raids. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, with a song and everything. But we, we have done stuff and we've been a bit slow to get, like, we've, we know, like, we have done some stuff and players have liked some of the stuff that's been done and we've been very slow to get it out because we've kind of done the game jam but we've not really had a proper plan to actually yeah. get them out. Whilst this time we're very much like, right, let's do a game jam but let's make it focused and make sure we set some time aside to actually finishing off some of these projects and getting them released. Um, as a result of what we did, uh, or the team did, um, was uh, quite ninja in nature for a lot of stuff. Um, and the ninja team are taking on a lot of stuff in terms of finishing off, um, packaging them up a bit nice. more, um, along with some of the ninja fixes that they've kind of got planned um, so that we may have such things as uh, a fire making week or um, a more of a combat fixes type week. Um, so uh, the Ninja team have put some plans in place um, in terms of what they're working on. Uh, generally, like the majority there is all stuff we're happy to see in game. Um, some things will be in sooner than others. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so, yeah, I mean, we, we have dedicated some time. Some stuff will get in there, um, and then other stuff might be more drip thread over time. Um, Ninja might continue to pick up some stuff, um, but other stuff might need to be more um, packaged in with larger updates and stuff. Uh, for example, uh, weapon diversity. Um, I think, well, I need to have a conversation with the Combat Council at some point because mm. I would like to release weapons uh, you know, some of the stuff at a time uh, individually. Well, so some of the weapons. Well, I believe okay. they would rather kind of like. We don't, we don't want to create little micro imbalances. Oh, I'm doing yeah. all and we also sleep. don't want to come into a world where we've done all of the worst thing we could do, all of the mage ones first. Um, and then the other so ones I we like. Definitely oh, we don't, don't plan to do that, but yeah. Yeah, but 
but like it's about releasing it in a balanced way. Mm -hmm. Like temporary micro imbalances we can deal with, um, but like the reason why we want to do all of them at once is about is whether like, whether we can um, break it up a bit um, so that it's easier to kind of get through the work and release them. Um, maybe it mm -hmm. does mean changing the meta for a while, um, but whether that's acceptable or not. But we haven't had a proper conversation about that. Um, cool. So I, it's probably unlikely because um, I'll they're the experts and so um, <laughs> I'll listen to what they say. Um, but yes, uh, so th there is a number of stuff coming through. Um, you 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 probably see some stuff in January, February, March for sure. After that, mm, we'll see when if uh, you know, what's kind of left and and the priority we want to give stuff. Um, but I would expect to, we talked a little bit earlier on about some of the quest changes um, that allow people to prioritize uh, or not prioritize so much as, as uh, ordering, of, ordering yeah, the yeah. thing based on dates of release and all that sort of stuff. Um, so I would definitely expect to see that out um, early in the new year um, along with uh, yeah, a bunch of others. Uh, so actually, while we're on the topic of Game Jam projects, I, wanna, I think we should probably touch upon... Have you got any, like, if people are really keen for any particular ones they want to ask about, do ask, and I can maybe give a bit more information, but yeah. Sure. Um, I think we can touch upon what Mod ramen has been up to with Next AOD. I think it's a good time to talk about this yep. now. Um, so, I mean, do you want to take this one? Uh, so, <clears throat> it, was, it, it didn't escape him that what he was doing was a bit controversial. Um, so what he's actually done is he's uh, spoken to the mining smithing guys and right now in the mining smithing beta the next changes are actually live. Um, so you can actually jump in the beta and test those changes and give him some feedback mm -hmm. based oh, on those. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. the next changes are the AOD changes, sorry, not next. We, yeah, um, I mean... They are... I mean, all, yeah, please jump in. Please bug Raman about it. Someone said, what are the changes? I'll see if I can get it up on this pad in a second, but bear with me. Um, but yeah, I think it's a really good opportunity while we had the beta ongoing to kind of do stuff yeah. like this. And I think having that ability to do this, because as you mentioned, obviously it's a very big change to us, obviously a very, the, the boss and profits and so on and so forth. Mm. It's very important we get it right. So having that opportunity to do it is great. So yes, definitely check that out in the minus whipping beta. And hell, maybe you can try and take on AOD with some of the more new mining swiffing gear from that beta, see how you get on with that. Um, so yeah, I thought we'd update you on that one, because that went live with the reboot we did today with the mining swiffing beta. So definitely give Ram and all your feedback. I saw someone ask about alchemical onyx yep. um, jewelry, and uh, yeah, that would be out before the end of the year. Nice. And that was from, that wasn't from the last game jam, that was one from the time before. Um, so that, is, that is indeed coming. That's good. Uh, I remember someone being worked on a project to be able to customize what the first action on an action bar does. Is there any news on this? Um, yes, that was mod server. Yep. Yeah. Mod yep. Um, uh, and I believe that uh, there is some some stuff we do need to resolve with it, so it's not a it's not a straightforward thing, unfortunately. They saw it on stream, to be uh, fair. Yeah, like, and it didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, <laughs> and it didn't work for a reason, and that's what we got to resolve. And um, but is you know, obviously it's a it's a great quality of life update yeah. um, that we would like to get into the game. Um, oh, so it's not being just thrown to one side sort of thing, but we we need to go through the work to actually get it done. So this, I'm going to ask this question in relation to Game Jam, then I'm going to ask a question related to Ninjas, because they both kind of tie in with removals. Let's talk about the removal okay. of Bounty Hunter first. So where are we with that? Um, well, Bob yeah. Pye, that's, that was your project, wasn't it? It is. So do you want to explain what you've done? Okay. <laughs> um, oh, I'll say, no, excited. it's not going, no. <laughs> no, um, so the, it's, it's, there's an awful lot done. Um, but there's a couple of large additions still to complete. So one of them is the big boss fight. Um, phase, half of it's written. Um, and we need to do a polishing on the Woodness Slayer. Um, we, that is definitely not dead. Um, and we're looking to get a team to pick it up and release it. Um, probably the only person to be really, really eager to remove what I put into the game. <laughs> like avidly please get rid of it um so yeah uh yeah and uh that is something that um ninja team have highlighted that they will try to um, work on and hopefully release um 
early next year, but um, you know, there is stuff to finish and we have to take into account how long that takes. And uh, I, I don't know if we could potentially release some of the stuff um, without all of it in place. Um, the only the only issue would be the tier eighty seven weapons. Yeah. Um, because they stuff, yeah they, they they like they can't turn into discontinued items. No. Um, yeah. So we need a strategy um, for making sure that they are still in the game and still obtainable. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we're we're keen to to get that done as part of the game jam stuff because it's uh, I mean that's been two game jams, isn't it? Maybe. Yeah. Mm, yeah. So, yeah. February and yeah. No, sorry, April and yeah. Yeah, we're, we yeah recognise well, the desire for that stuff. And, uh, okay, and obviously I mentioned the other part of a removal question which I'm going to get into, which is mobilising armies. Where are we with the removal of um, mobilising armies? Coming soon. Uh, I'm not up to date where exactly it is. It's I've a waiting copy, it. so is it's it? just a matter of cool. making its way in now, Yeah. Um, whatever that may be. Yeah, we've, we've seen the work the ninjas have done and we've approved the work. Um, so it's uh, yeah, only a matter of time, really. Awesome. Uh, right. Uh, what is the status on the data stream? Shoney said something about hosting streams, showing various data samples, blah, 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 blah. <coughs> so, um, yes, the data stream I want to do by the end of this year uh, to go through the stuff we've gone through in the past, obviously, and see what awesome stuff the analytics guys are up for uh, letting us show, I guess. So uh, we have a really amazing analytics team, data-wise, that we can get in a game. And I feel like, you know, having that stream to showcase it is going to be awesome. So. Looking to try and do that by the end of the year, fingers crossed. Uh, could the Guardian of the Grove title be changed into something that is a bit less lengthy? Like a ramen question? I didn't speak to him, but he never gave me an answer. It's one of those odd questions you back from when like we worked in Ninja and stuff where mm. it's kind of like, well, one person has asked for that thing. It's like, yeah, yeah we could, but probably who maybe. like, I imagine yeah. if, if Ninja want to pick the up or whatever, then I imagine they'll go through a Ninja yeah. poll where people actually need to approve that since it's something existing in the game and mm. it's, it's a minor thing really in the grand scheme of things. What is the status on the alternate tsunami being changed that it works the same as Dragon Breath, i.e. no longer needing to be facing in a certain direction for it to activate? And he's writing it down in his pipe pad. Yeah, because that's another one that's been set in the combat backlog that I will pick up. Boom, there we go. Uh, can we uh, can we repoll the option of being allowed to see the names of people placing certain items in citadels to block the banker? I was not aware that was a thing. If you want me to be honest, uh, IE portables currently only shows time, not the person who placed it, which I suppose is to try and combat portable trolls. Uh, repoll would be fine. I mean, I guess it's long. So, so we we currently don't show people's names. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I believe so. So we're probably do that deliberately not to give them celebrity kind of I mean, status, it, I guess. It's also like, a bit awkward, right? So the first guy places one and a long guy, yeah. a guy comes with six and like five, sorry, um, and then extends it. Like whose name do you put there? I mean, we've also, if we've polled it before as well, then we've made a decision and we can never change a decision. As this, <laughs> as this country knows, regardless oh, of the situation, oh my God, it's got a decision can never be changed. <laughs> No, <laughs> no. Um, Moving on. <laughs> how, about, how about some balance changes to existing content? Jagex has always been a little bit reluctant to change existing content, bring it more in line with new slash other content. Um, well, mainly when yeah, we I do mean, that, it goes down incredibly badly. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Very bad. Any, we, any examples just so? Barbarian um, Assault is the one that springs to mind. Mm -hmm. Increasing the damage of Dark Beasts and Ketzek. Oh, uh, with Metaphos release, yes, I remember that. Yep, yeah. I remember that very well. Yeah. yeah the biggest issues we had. <laughs> well, we made them, obviously, their HP scale because it, the, well, the XP off them was very easy. Mm. But that was considered. I think for some really old content, like yeah. old content where, say, like a, a hunter creature that no one ever trains at anymore and um, uses the rewards from many more, something like that. You know, we need to think a bit more of a kind of like, um, okay, we're adding some new hunter content, and instead of like trying to find a gap in hunter, we would actually just take that out and replace it with a new thing, um, and kind of modernize it that way, rather than just always trying to kind of modernize the old content because that yeah. doesn't tend to go so well. There's a, there's and a you're then working also with things like legacy code where it's 
Yes. Some most well, I'm, you guys tell me, but I'm sure <laughs> it's probably a lot easier to just rewrite fresh new code than try and rework old stuff. Extent, yeah. There's a, there's a vision that some players have, I think, that that all content should remain relevant always, and that's not really a realistic objective for us. Like we just can't yeah. really do that. No, like I kind of see the releases as like the journey of a player yeah. as they go through. Mm. Um, uh, it's a shame that there's something that you did like 10 years ago that's really amazing and a key part of your teenage years that now just isn't worth doing anymore and that kind of sucks, but we can't necessarily fix that. Cool. Uh, what's the general consensus on retiring the legacy game client, or are Java? Uh, are you waiting until the mobile app is out to do this? I don't think it's tied into mobile. There's still a desire for us to do that. Um, generally, there has been a large enough player base still using Java which is why we've not done it. Um, it is, I, I can't, it's been a while since I've looked at that, um, but for a long time, it was kind of still sitting at kind of maybe like 15, 10% on Java. Um, and it's always been the case that we've wanted to get rid of it. Um, but I don't think it's tied into mobile in any way. No. Like we wouldn't associate with mobile. Not at all. <coughs> um, but yes, it's, it's definitely something that you, we were talking about it again recently, and it's definitely something we want to do because it does add more work onto people's lives and stuff. Can the agility skill be looked at and made more fun? No. No? Uh, <laughs> I think... Uh, it's the rite of passage. <laughs> I think uh, it depends on uh, what you're talking about. If you're talking about... Um, making agility courses, maybe high, uh, taking out a certain agility course, trying to make it more fun, then sure, if you're talking about the kind of agility reworks, I think um, you know, then they really need to see the benefit of like reworking the whole skill and what it's gonna bring to the game, because it would no doubt be a huge project um, and very time consuming. And you know, is that the best thing when we could work on a billion other type things? But I know like you, know, Pi, for example, has had plans to update one of them. I mean, yeah, your I really wanted one. to like, make a high-level version of the Brimhaven Agility Arena. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed it when I played it back in the day. <laughs> um, I really enjoyed it until I died with 798 tickets on me whilst I was going for Pirate Hook. But um, <laughs> yeah, I know that hurt. But like something a bit more engaging rather than just like going around agility course, something that actually asks you questions. Uh, me and Mod Hunter actually made up a, like a prototype where we increased the size of the platforms. There were two tickets going off, off at once. Some of the uh, agility obstacles disappeared, so you had to think a bit more about your route to make it a bit more cerebral and a bit more fun. But it's also quite good because it's like, if you all go in the same world, it's quite a community-driven thing because like once you've got your tickets, you're all sat around like chatting rubbish, um, <laughs> which is what RuneScape's about, yeah, right? Of course. Sat around getting XP <laughs> whilst chatting rubbish. So um, I guess I can kind of, well, I'm going to use it as an opportunity to talk about what the thing I want to do actually now, because we're on about agility, so why not? Um, so I found out that I'm now able to talk about this, so I'm quite excited. So clans and the clan cups. Now, Jagex, i.e. RuneScape, have not done a clan cup officially since 2015. The last one we've had was 2016, as hosted by players. Uh, for 2018, the end of 2018, well, fingers crossed anyway, but, you know, it's the way it is. Um, we want to try to do a pilot version of a skilling cup. Now, in essence, we choose one skill for a week and allow clans to just go for it and see which clans can essentially, you know, be the most efficient skillers in a skill for a week. Um, I'm not going to go into the full details of it because I'm just going to say there's now a forum open for it if Mod Paul keeps watching and he said he was and hopefully he's opened it. Uh, there should be a forum open where we can uh, discuss it there. Um, there's no official dates and so on, but the door is open to discuss this uh, to try and add a bit more fun into skilling. I thought, well, agility is going to be interesting to see how everyone trains it, I guess, to see who's the most efficient on it. So. Uh, it should be good. Uh, there are clan rewards, and if the skilling cup goes down well for the, uh, as a pilot version, there is room for more, so fingers crossed. Um, 
And the only way you can gain XP is base experience. So no bonus experience, no outfit boosting experience. Uh, Silver Hulk Feathers won't count either. <laughs> it's literally just base XP. Let's try, guys. Um, so yeah, it's basically who will be the most efficient. Um, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, I think that's uh, something that I wanted to do for a while. So hopefully it'll be worth it. Um, we'll go on to another question. We have more questions from the chat, and then we can wrap up. We've answered a lot. I'm really happy about this. Uh, can the achievement tab be able to remember the last tab slash achievement you have opened before? Four. So the problem being where someone's doing these summoning achievements, they can bring up the list and look at, oh, I've done this. But then when they open up the achievements tab, they have to go all the way back into the tabs and find the specific ones. So is that possible? Do we know? I mean, I've not looked at the code, mm. but in my head it's possible. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> but I'm not going to promise anything until I look at the code, you know. I'm, I'm in the same, the same yeah, boat. I'm like, I'm going, sounds doable. Maybe. <laughs> and then there's, you know, the guys that made it going, no. No. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, all right, got some more questions coming I up. I saw which oh, Jake Mort has the best beard, and I think that has to be a straw ball. It's oh. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, straw ball there. Go on, Josh. Go on that. Oh, he's, he's, he's just like, Don't oh, add. Oh. He's <laughs> taking off his hoodie. Do you know, honestly, fun fact. You're we, actually making this. We No, but this is the thing. We've not yeah. had a straw poll on these streams in this. So we're wasting I've been, I mean, it's, it's the whole, it's the whole time. The whole time I've been thinking, like, quotas. what can we straw poll? <laughs> I want to bring in a straw poll. I've not had anything, and then I just saw someone talk about beards, and I was like, I'm sure. <laughs> Let's do it. It's funny, <laughs> it's funny because I was, I, I, no joke, one of the questions I'm about to read from the chat is how can we don't poll the community like OSRS does? How can we what? Don't poll the community like OSRS does. Like poll them in games. Obviously, oh, game right. question, but I mean, timing. we do try to uh, do a bit more than ninja stuff. Um, unfortunately, a lot of the kind of questions that we end up asking tend to be uh, either really kind of minor or ones that take a bit of time to do. So, like, we try to actually complete. All the work from a poll before mm -hmm. we do the next one. They do have another one planned, but not for quite a while. Um, but yeah, our strategy isn't to poll everything. That's not what we do. Like that's works for old school and stuff, and that's their. We've their experimented way to do things, with the past, right? Like we've done some stuff. Like we've tried Dream Labs and stuff like that, and yeah. other bits. And well, we ended up polling two things against each other, and the answer was do both. Yeah. yeah. So actually, the poll didn't really help very much because as soon as we polled it, everyone was like, "Yeah, yeah, we need that now." We definitely want to work closely with our community, mm. um, and uh, you, yeah, we've got, um, we're looking into how to do that better, different strategies with that. Um, but uh, and some of it's not stuff people necessarily see and realize we do, because um, not everything is just post something on Reddit. Um, uh, but yeah, it, we we do we are working. We do want to work with people, but. We polling often, you is not our, our strategy really so much. And so we often have like discussions designed about things in Discord so people can get involved and talk mm -hmm. with the mods about things. I know mining smithing's been running on it. Yeah. We have the the law I chat and argue. Open uh, oh, sorry. Ooh. Sorry. Uh, so we and we I know that Kylar had did his whole quest shop thing via the, uh, the yeah. Discord as well. So uh, we do use we did player own farm in Discord as well, so we often try and get involved with players like there. So I find I find chatting to the players better than polling because you um, get you don't just get an answer, you get a reason for the answers, yeah. and you get a back and forth. Yeah, yeah. like right. we could we could get a poll answer, and we go, oh, we're not so keen on that, and then we can go, oh, these are our reasons, and then you can also it's, it can be really hard when you're <laughs> saying, when you're saying the question. <laughs> <laughs> when you're saying such a question, oh, uh, like uh, you, how does someone interpret it? Uh, interpret that question. Um, so yeah, definitely discussions well, work a lot. Better. All right, I think that I, I'm going to end the stream with a question for myself. Actually, let's let's talk about this little discussion we just had. So, how do we define? You say talking to players better than do a poll. How do you find that middle ground where you consider it enough valuable information versus oh they're just ranting me, uh, ranting to me about X, Y, and Z. Like, where's that line? Oh, it depends, um, it depends on the context. Sure. Yeah, like, yeah, that's yeah. Like we, there, there are to like we, we never want to do something the player base don't want, ever. And so we try to do what the player base do want. And a mm. poll is a tool to, to to learn that, but it's not necessarily the only tool or the most accurate tool. So as OS OS uses them. Like that's their principle, their guiding principle for their game is the active player base determine what goes into the game and that's like their philosophy that they operate by. But for us, we're often trying, like the currently active players running the poll are not the only target audience for the content, for example. So if we're trying to, if we're trying to like improve some game feature, 
then lapsed players might not might not know that's going on. And so, like, by definition, almost the active players are the people that don't have a problem with how it is. Mm -hmm. All right, that's fair. Um, any anyone else want to jump, like, chip in I'd on say, that? I'd say ranting isn't something you should discount, dis, like discount as well. Right. Like ranting tells you tells me an awful lot. Like I've been ranted at no, more times than I can count. But it's Sorry. It's, a, it's like another. <laughs> it's, it's like for me, it's another form of communication. They're just communicating it badly. If you catch my drift. Yeah. If someone's if if I make a balance change in EOC and I get a ton of hate, like you you. As a JMOD, you need to be like adult enough to take a step back and see the reasons why you're getting said hey, and then look at it objectively. Yeah, so, you don't you don't ignore yeah. the hate. Yeah, you, 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 know, you know you know there's a problem, but you end up speaking to yeah. the person who's going to be reasonably and, and explain it better. And yeah, yeah. It, it's about getting that right kind of um, conversation with them. Yeah, like someone having a problem and providing you that sort of feedback that is negative, that is constructive is great like we love that i mean we don't love it because <laughs> we would like our stuff to be the greatest thing ever as far as we're concerned certainly i would but i have an ego um but we it is useful to have that information because you can tailor you can change and we have made huge changes based on this feedback mm. um it isn't terribly useful if you just get wow i hate everything or you should be fired like that's not useful because it's no. just that kind of it just it needs to be focused it needs to be constructive like we will listen to all good constructive feedback but if it's just a torrent of screaming then it's not terribly useful <laughs> i mean if you don't mind me saying like endgame initially at the start of endgame well, i got release. some today <laughs> why about endgame oh uh, well, yeah someone decided to to tweet me uh their chat was just oh i hate this should be fired and i'm like that's not useful to me no. like yeah knowing why the maze didn't work knowing the problems there is useful like we've looked at going forward and we've adjusted any plans that we had and we've made changes and we've adapted the schedule based on that. But just the other things, it's just not useful. Awesome. Well, I think, you know, I think that's probably the best way I can think of ending the stream. I think it's just kind of giving us a little insight as to try and how we figure out, I guess, feedback discussions and stuff like that. I think it's really cool to try to kind of chime in on that. Obviously, you know, thank you so much to you four for joining me, like for the entire hour. Um, Kelpie Pie, it's been great to have you back on the stream for the first time in a very long time. Uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll back like, a lot know. more. Yeah. yeah um, as long as people want me back. No. Yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> we'll let the, I'm, I'm sure the chat wants you back. But I mean, let us know if uh, you enjoyed the stream as well. That's like the biggest thing here. I have one thing I am noticing, there's a lot of repeat questions about player in the house um, and uh, mobilizing armies and stuff. And we we have answered those in yes. the stream. So you, if you've missed them, then um, please watch back. Um, because we have covered them, so or go to Reddit. Oh yeah, yeah. The TLDR. Seriously, or Rebecca. Um, so by all means, you know, let us know if you enjoy the stream. Uh, I think if John, I, I think John, I think it's safe to say we kind of want to do kind of general streams a bit more in the future, yeah, or try and do a bit more regularly. Yeah, because I think it's great to kind of take. It, no, of course, not in every week, then, but like take a step back and kind of address more general topics across the game itself, and not just focusing on done most recent content coming up. So I think it's good to kind of take that step back, kind of similar to like how we do um, QOL weeks on the older content and stuff like that in a way. Um, so the Pakiak plus she apparently has the best beard as is decided by a straw poll. So there you have it. I'm, I'm amazed at anyone voting for like this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think we'll uh, use that to wrap up. This is um, ego again. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, hopefully we've answered as much as we can, and hopefully you are all satisfied. We'll, we, you know, we've tried our best to do that. But as a note, next week's stream, uh, we're actually going to be looking at the arts that we use to create the Christmas quest. And for the first time, we're actually going to be gonna looking into some of how the audio team have created the audio to do with the quest, which I'm very excited for. So for the very first really time on stream. Really for the art. Uh, really? No, here we go. <laughs> All right, there we go again. Um, <laughs> I think apart from that, unless there's anything you guys want to say to wrap up, I think we're done here. Play the money in Smithing Beach. There we go. Nice. Yes. Beta. And go play AOD. Beta. 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 Alpha. Beta. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. We hope you enjoyed the stream. Until next time, of course, take care and have a good one. Bye.